Well, let's go to see the concept of an element. What is an element? An element is what comes, comes from the grid, from the grid generator. The grid generator gives us, as a numerical analyst, the guy who is going to uh, do a program, you do some code, gives the coordinate points, and the coordinate points defines an element. And there is the grid node and the element. According to the simulator, if it's well suited for numerical analysis, it can give you the numbering of the nodes, the numbering of the elements too, so then you have all the, the data, geometrical data given by your grid generator. But the element is what comes from the grid. No? And the element is defined by the grid nodes. No? The elements and nodes are numbered. It, nodes are numbered relate to a global coordinate system. If you have a big unstructured mesh, you have the X and Y and Z, then you have all the, the nodes number, one, two, three, until millions of nodes. And the elements, you are, lo you are looking at them locally. And then, but you have, you can number also your elements. Because we're going to see that in element based, you are going to construct your control volume with parts of the elements. That's what will define our next slide, which is the definition of the cell center and the cell vertex methods. Cell center. I'm also calling here the conventional finite volume method that you, you use the control volume as you use the element as control volume. So the control volume is, is, is the element which comes from the grid. That's why it's called cell center. Cell here is synonymous of element. We could call element center method which means you are putting your unknown your variable at the center of the element this not should be not confused thinking that the unknown is in the center of the control volume of course the unknown is in the center of control volume doesn't matter if it's cell center or cell vertex, the unknown is always in the center of the control volume. The name comes from the relation between the storage of the unknown related to the element, what comes from the grid. And then this element came from the grid, and I'm using this element as my control volume with my flux and this, those boundaries. So this is a, a cell center. And repeating, we could call element center method too. And the ver cell vertex is the method that you is the method that you create your control volume based on the elements, based on the elements. Let's say we we see the element there, but the control volume is this one. You are you are using part of that element, which is this element, part of the element which is depicted there, part of this element, part, and this is the control volume. So the unknown, the variable, the unknown which is in your linear system, is in the vertex of the element, in the vertex of the element. That's why it's a cell vertex. It's in the vertex of the element. I, I, I'm sure you already know that because most of you already uh, attended computational one and we uh, there we we, we we talk a little bit about that but this is, is cell center and cell vertex we are going to deal with these two methods with these two methods in this course it's still 
trying to talk about the generalized stuff which applies for cell center, applies for cell vertex. Let's have a look at our equation. Our equation is the transient part, advection, diffusion, and a source term. You can see here that this equation is in its divergence form. So this is divergence of the advection term, is the divergence of the diffusion term, some source term, and a transient part. I'm, I'm, we are seeing here, it's a control volume. Now it doesn't matter how this control volume was constructed. Now it's a control volume, you are doing the balance on this control volume. So we have to integrate our equation, uh, you know, uh, with in integration in space and time. I will have to integrate transient, advection, diffusion, and source term. So uh, at this time, uh, doesn't matter yet uh, if it's cell center or cell vertex, you are always going to do this equation. Doesn't matter if cell center or cell vertex. Where lies the difference is in order to evaluate some properties here. If you are in cell center, you have to do some way the evaluation. If you are in cell vertex, let's say element based finite volume, you have another way to evaluate. Some more easy, more, let's say, uh, less prone to difficulties and errors and the others. So the difference is in the way we input some numericals on the equation, but the integration is the same for both maths. We are always to integrate the, uh, our equation, the control volume. So it's, it's so, what I said before, if you have a Cartesian control volume, and if you have this control volume, Doesn't matter what I choose here, it's minus plus in, in, the, in the balance. When you go from here, nothing changes, as I said in the beginning. You have to compute the flux of the interface. There you have to compute the flux of the interface. Main difference, X and Y will be here. X and Y will be here. So, this is the U velocity. The U velocity here, it doesn't suffice to calculate the mass flow. So, details, changing from here to there, are details. Some numericals, I, I, I have called it. And this, I will go through these numerics a little bit in order to uh, for completeness of the course, just for completeness of the course. And then I'm repeating here the equation. The integration gives that. Of course, I'm not going through all this integration. No? This is, is available, this is in the book, you know. And uh, uh, The integration of a transient term is here. What we are using here, a backward difference in time, No superscript is in the time level. We have, if you have two times, times t, times t plus delta t. Variables at this, le at this, at this time level carries no superscript. And in the time t, carries the superscript old old. Some, sometimes we say uh, phi at zero, so it's old in fact. So this is a transient term and, and keep uh, uh, remember that this is a backward difference 
you are using this point minus this point. This is the delta t. Necessarily, it can it, it, it cannot be like that. You can you can have more accurate uh, uh, interpolation in, in 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 time. You could use let's say uh, three time levels. If I'm here, they can use the, this and this one. You know, but uh, in my view. Normally, in the beginning of the transient, you have to have a small delta t's to capture the physics of the phenomena. And then, it doesn't matter too much if you have a second order or first order when you have a very small time step. And sometimes you can save computer time. Everything depends on the, what do you want, what is your physical problem. For what you are calculating, your, 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 your solving your equation. Where are you going to apply? What kind of engineering problem it is? So then you have to decide. No, this is a very, very, very delicate, transient. Then maybe you have to refine a lot in time, or to use a second order term. But normally, for engineering problems, if you refine enough in time. You will, get, you will get a reasonable solution using uh, a backward uh, in, in time. This is the integration of uh, the, uh, the advection terms. You need to compute. This is the mass flow. This is the mass flow times the transported. It, uh, entity. So this is the this velocity is what transports. Yeah, this is mass flow transporting phi. Phi could be one, which is the proper mass conservation equation. It can be u, v, w, and so on. K epsilon. If you have a k epsilon turbulence model, you can have concentration. If you have a uh, single phase flow with components on that, you know. You will have one of those equation, one momentum equation or one mass conservation equation for each component. If you have a, a multi-phase flow, you know, uh, the equations are always the same, you know. Then, transient term, diffusion, uh, convection. Mass flow has to be calculated here. That's why I was, I was showing here. You have mass flow, mass flow, mass flow, mass flow, transporting a property which we are, we are, we are calling the, the transported property at the integration point. So you are going to have to measure the advection of the phi. A direction phi in the in the boundary, and this is the first important numerical aspect of the integration of the equation. Who is phi at the integration points? Integration points for us will be the midpoints here. F is here is F. F is equal to integration point. They are located in the middle of each phase. One integration point, another one, another, uh, all the integration points, you have to compute that. But how do you find that? Because what you have is phi. Phi is here, not there. So it, this is the interpolation function that we have to, to do for the advection terms. Very, very important because Errors come uh, are, arise when you do such, that interpolation. You should be very careful. Uh, understood this interpolation. Now, the same way you have mass flow carrying phi. This is the. Let's say you have a m phi the integration point here. The same here, there, there, and there. Here you also you also have 
diffusion coefficients here times the area. So here's the diffusion of the property you are considering. The diffusion. You have to calculate this diffusion here. And so you need to have the, the gradient of phi calculated at this point. When you are, in, we don't remember that when we are in the Cartesian, you know, because when you are in the Cartesian, you are going to calculate the gradient here. You get this point minus that point, that, that derivative is, is easier. So, so it, we, we didn't think about that when we were using the Cartesian, because it's clear. It's clear. There is nothing to do. If I have to calculate the gradient here, I have the var variable there. So it's this one minus this one. It's a, it's a derivative. It's easy to do. You cannot do that there. Uh, the other point is there, there, so there is no x direction and y direction here. That's why you need to calculate the, the gradient of phi. No? At integration points, you need to have the gradient of phi on those positions. You know? uh, and then, knowing that everything what we saw right now, so he's thinking about the integration of the equation, some details. And what came out of this equation that we need the, 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 the variable at the integration points, and we need the gradient of the variables at the integration points. How to do that? So this is the interpolation functions. And then we are going to, to do some brief review of some important numericals involved in the procedure. This applies for cell sense as well as cell vertex matter. So we didn't specify that this is valid for the balance is a control volume, it doesn't matter the way the control volumes appear. You need to, you need to find balances of diffusion and uh, advection and diffusion uh, 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 calculated at the, at the interface. And then we end up say who, who is phi in the integration point? Then comes the spatial interpolation because your next control, your, your, your neighboring control volume, by the way, it, it can be here. So how do I Grad of phi in the integration points. How, how, how can I determine here and there and there, there and there? I, I need to find that. Comes the interpolation function. And what is the interpolation function? Interpolation function, if I have the unknowns in the red points, this is where I have my variable. The interpolation function. It has the, the, the work, you know, the, 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 what the interpolation function has to do is to connect variables in, in the best way. What is to connect the variables in the best way is, is to have a function which represents the physics which is there. You know? We need to specify as better as possible the physics between nodes. Then if you have a, a variable with functions like that, if you put a straight line, there is an error. And then you, you need to, to give some interpolation function. This is not easy, because this is the solution of the problem. This is what you, you want to know. Of course, I mean, just remarking here that if you have two grid nodes here, in a function that does like that. But if you put your grid node very close, then central differential scheme may, may be enough. Because if I, put, if I put a straight line from here to there, it's a tremendous error. But if I put a straight line here, 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 and there, and there, I'm representing the physics. 
the black uh, is, I, I guess this is the physics, and I have to follow that. If I have only three points, and I, I, I say I'm going to do a linear interpolation, I'm far away from the physics. But if I put many, many, many points, and then I do a linear interpolation, I'm saying, no, no, I, I'm representing the physics so quite reasonable. And then, that's if the grid is refined enough, linear interpolation, which is the central differential scheme, uh, will, uh, will be enough for this problem. That's what I'm always saying you know, in, in the classes, that the computer, the computer is really, uh, let's say, uh, do, uh, the, the, the grow of the computer, uh, the storage, every, every day, uh, larger storage, uh, CPU, uh, the speed of calculations. I'm saying that the computer is in fact doing some kind of, uh, under quotes, research for us. Because there is many, 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 there's a lot of research that was done from the, from the, 70, from the 70s, middle of 70s, up to now. Many, but really many, efforts in trying to find good interpolation functions to put in our discretization equation. And if you have a, a large computer, very large, with high speed computing, you, you, you need to do central differencing. You don't need all the research that was done in the past in order to have a, 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 more, uh, a more precise uh, solution. It will be okay for, for a lot of engineering problems. I'm saying uh, it, it can be out of this rationale, some very, very special problems. But in average for the engineering calculations, I think that the growing of the computer will be achieve some uh, level that central differential scheme will suffice for many of our engineering problems. And you, you are going to do that with uh, very fast, with uh, we need, not needing say, sophisticated interpolation functions. But this is what you have to do, theory. You have to represent as better as possible the physics between two grid nodes, two variables. And if you have a lot of variables together, of course, it, it becomes easier to do the interpolation function. Yeah. And I'm going through, I'm trying to be, I, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. I'm going to just to remember, if you have a Cartesian grids, then you have the famous upwind scheme, the upwind scheme, which is the function in this point depends on the donor cell, which gives the information. In this, which you know, the donor cell which gives the information, you know. So central uh, uh, upstream differential scheme for the velocity in this direction, for the other one. Uh, everyone, uh, you, you all know this. Central differencing, well then, it's for main, applied for diffusion problems because the function here depends on this and this one. I'm, in a way, I'm not going to go to the physics of that, of course. If you have a strong convection, stronger direction, then the information comes from the direction of the direction. It doesn't travel from the point uh, uh, below uh, to the point where you are calculating. The information comes from upwind. So this is the upwind scheme. If it's diffusion, then the information in one point is, 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 is the, this point is affected by the information in, in, in both points because it's, it's diffusion. 
which diffusion is in all direction. So this fits well for diffusion problems. And now this is for Cartesian grids, but if you have unstructured grids, which are our topic, how you calculate the, the phi, that's what we want, no? phi at the integration point, this is one integration point, this is another integration point, for unstructured grids, this is an integration point, this is another integration point, this is another integration point, here is the variable, there is the variable. How do you calculate a uh, central differential scheme? What you do is to expand. Zero is this one, and uh, one is this one. So you expand the value from here to there. You expand the value from there to, to here, to the face. And then you add, you have two values on the face. The expansion is here. This is uh, Taylor. Taylor expansion is clear, recognizable here. Uh, one value coming from the zero is phi zero plus grad phi zero times the distance. Coming from the other side, the one to the face is another value. So we add both and divide. This is the central differencing, which is, it's here. It's, it's, it's okay, right? It's just, it's just in a, in, a, in a grid, I'm going from here, expand to here. I have one value. Then I have here, expand to here. I have another value. I pick up these two values and do some average. And this is the value I'm considering in the interface. So it's, 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 it's getting the influence of this here, the influence of this one here, and you have, so this is really diffusion. It's a central differential equation. It's okay for diffusion. If you have a flow here, and you're gonna see, you, you need some other uh, uh, schemes. So uh, for now, structural grids is easy to do. It would be the same as doing here. Everything applies for the Cartesian, of course. I want to have it calculated the phi at this integration point. So then I expand. Here's my one, here my one, I expand from here to there. I have one value. From there to here, I have another value. Then I make the average of these values. It's going to be the sum of the two points, right? So this is the central differential scheme applied for non-structured grids which requires this expansion from one point to the surface okay and then just to reveal uh, power law scheme the power law scheme you are aware of that the power law scheme since the interpolation functions try to represent the physics of the phenomena, why not to use a one-dimensional advection diffusion equations to establish, to create your interpolation function? So this is then using a 1D advection diffusion, which when normalized, that I'm not putting here this normal, normalization, this is an equation, it has an analytical solution. The analytical solution is here. If you have an analytical solution, and here's the representative of all the velocities, all packet numbers. Packet numbers here, zero is linear, pure diffusion. You have only the right side of the equation. And those Peclé minus infinity, Peclé uh, plus infinity, minus infinity, is the jump profile here, the jump profile. So there is a family of solutions among Peclé zero and Peclé uh, infinity, or minus infinity is, is, is the same, so just mirror it. And then you can use this, uh, you can use this equation as interpolation function. So 
you can calculate derivatives, point some coefficient, which in fact is choosing which one of the interpolation functions you have. If it's pure diffusion, it will be the central differential scheme, pure central differential scheme. If there is some other action, then it's going to be some curve here, in some point here. And then you can calculate the derivatives at point E and the function at point E, which is an integration point. And I'm calling E because it is P, uses E, small e in the interface. And then, as I, as I said, we don't recognize what we are doing here is to calculate the gradient of phi, of phi, gradient of phi, which is straightforward for Cartesian, but it's not for, for general control volume. So the solution, there is an analytical solution. Those coefficients, alpha and beta, they just are choosing one of the curves here one of the curves. And this is made on exponential, which is, was, uh, was uh, approximated by an, a more easy equation to calculate in the computer, because exponential is a series right, to calculate in the computer. And then those are, so this is the weighted upstream differential scheme. Means, if you have just upstream differential scheme, you are thinking, is a pure advection. Weighted means I'm mixing advection with diffusion. That's what this equation is done. Mixing advection with diffusion, you know. I didn't tell you. you. You can ask. If there is any doubt, please ask me. You know, raise your hand and and, and you can talk. No problem. Uh, I know that most of you already know that so maybe there is no question on this on this part going going on in terms of uh, interpolation functions we know that upstream differential scheme uh, is a first order approximation first order approximation and if it's a first order approximation, there is some uh, numerical diffusion will show up in our solution. Then there is the second order upwind. So, second order upwind. What does the second order upwind? It adds to the upstream node some new term trying to bring the, the, from the first, first order to a second order approximation. Phi and gradient of phi are calculated at the center of the upstream volume. Then, then it works like that. If I have a flow like that, this is the upstream, right? Or if I have like that, I'm considering this the upstream. Then I have the phi calculated the upstream value. What would it be the pure upstream differential scheme here would be to say that the value at the face is this one, right? This will be the pure upstream differential scheme. Trying to see the, what is there, right? upstream value. So the, the, the phi in the interface is the upstream value. If I do here this, the same, saying that the value in, in the integration point, which is called F here, is, is this one. This is the first order. But I, I add some uh, behavior of the phi from here to there, which is the series there. And then I'm going to calculate the gradient here and then see to add some term which brings the upstream brings the first order to a second order. And then I have uh, the phi calculated at the integration point using a second order upwind. Why? 
because on the top of the upwind, pure upwind, I'm adding some term which he brings to a second order term. So, uh, uh, second order upwind.